Hi, this is Sergeant Beast Larson. Officers, emotions, and use of force. What I wanna talk about today. Welcome, happy National Correction Officer Week, May 2nd to May the 8th. Um, filming this today is Sunday the 2nd. Uh, it's gonna get out tomorrow. Emotions and use of force. I'm gonna talk a little bit the police side, a little bit the correction side, because I've, I've had careers in both. I'll tell you this to, to start off with, when I interviewed uh, at the prison to get on the cert team, one of the things the lieutenant asked me was, if you're in the middle of, of a heated confrontation, a use of force, you know, things very active, how quick can you turn that off? I said, instantly. And he and the team just looked at me and I said, I've been through a lot, I'm experienced, I've been an instructor for many years, I've trained to turn on and off. And I was fortunate to be able to do that. Um, it took a lot of uh, violence and situations in my career as a police officer to be able to do this. It is hard. Um, and, and I'm not perfect. I'm not 100% turn off. You know, we can push and push and get ourselves, you know, 97, 98% where we can control emotion. But there are times that it's going to get the best of us. So let's, let's kind of break some things down real quick. Short video. The use of force. Um, in corrections, you're around the inmates all the time, the detainees, you want to call them in the uniforms. You're around them, they're always trying to provoke your buttons. So you will kind of walk around with this, you know, blow off everything they say, you're saying no all day. You're kind of in, in a blah mode, but they can say the right thing to hit that trigger, hit that switch. Same as in law enforcement. You get somebody, stop, pull over, come out of the car. I might come out of the car. You're violating my rights. You're this, you're that. And they start to look, I'm record all this. And you can be very patient and talk through things. You can explain the law so many times with patience, you're gonna lose a little patience. It's gonna happen. We have to, everybody, you and I, I as an instructor, I as a practitioner, you know, using force, we all have to learn how to allow escalation and control de-escalation. And I don't mean in your voice, I don't mean in, oh, let's just back off, but in your mind and your heart, your emotion, all of that has to de-escalate, not just choosing your words. You don't, you know, I'm not saying you stop yelling and cussing and screaming and saying, okay, now little inmate Johnny, I need you to stop and lay down now. That's not what I'm saying. It's controlling all of this. Now things are gonna happen. You know, walking through the prison, stop by, you're putting some food in there, open the food trap, you know, the feed slot, whatever you want to call it, flap door, out comes a shampoo bottle full of urine and feces. You're going to have emotion. I'm going to have emotion. And I, and I tried to reach and grab him by his emotion maker. And I couldn't quite reach him. Things are going to happen. Yes, I have the urine in my face. I've had the feces in my head, in my face, in my hair, a little bit of hair, where you run down there, jump in the shower with your uniform on or rinse off. You're going to have some. And there, there are some days it just catches you, and there's some days, you know, when it gets all in your eye, and it's going to flip you off. And that day, I was down in Tier 2. We had problems with the inmate. Lieutenant went and fed him. We went to pick up trays. I said, no, let him keep the tray till dinner. Night shift will pick it up, or let him keep it till tomorrow until he cools down. And Lieutenant ordered me to open the flap and get the tray and I got a whole shampoo bottle full of diarrhea feces in my eye, in my right here and in my eye. Now I had a lot of emotion. I, uh, I yelled, I disrespected that lieutenant, apologized later, but I said, you'll never feed to be around me again. Cause this to get in my eye and put me at risk the rest of my life to infectious disease? No, not being around that lieutenant, I wasn't. I went down, I, I knocked next door, all like this I said hey you got anything clean in here he said I got you Sarge I opened the flap and I knew him and I, and I knew he wouldn't be a problem he gave me clean t-shirts and and some towels hand towels that he had water from the sink and I could see this with my my eye open here got the most as I could went downstairs jumped in the shower and I was stripped down to just t-shirt and pants you know my boots on Soaking wet and everything and, and I let everybody in that dorm know that that war was coming and that war was me the beast 
yeah, I had some emotion and, and I wanted to let them know. And it took a little while for my emotion. I was more mad at the lieutenant for forcing this, but also mad at this inmate who had also threatened to kill me and kill my family and then put this in my face. Now, I got a lot of threats all day, kind of used to that, but just don't want diarrhea in your eyeball, burning your eye. That set some emotion off. So here's what I had to do. I had to swallow my pride, my ego. I did some yelling. He was in the back corner, the last cell. And I yelled all the way through. I'm about raised the roof with my voice. I got outside and got the fresh air. I went away from the building. I went away from the situation. No, I didn't want to. The jackhammer was ready to go. But the brain and the heart said, take the body over here and separate. That's what's hard, but that's what you have to do. Control emotion, control emotion. And I wasn't involved in the use of force, but that was a situation where I got out. Now I've had uh, cell extractions, you get excited, you go, you go in, you have that use of force. You know, I'm always the shield man. Watch my video, the jackhammer technique. I show you how to jackhammer that plexiglass so their head is like vibrating off the wall. It's a stunning technique. And you go through all that, you're sweaty, you probably got chemical agent on you, you know, may have one eye half shut, you come out, and you're all like. One thing not to do, because the cameras don't come out high fiving everybody saying, Yeah, we whooped his butt. Don't do that. It's where your brain and your heart, your emotion have to come in. That's why I'm making this video. Don't come out doing that. You come out like a professional, you walk. You can wait high five later in a building off camera. There's always a time that I celebrate later. And I mean, there's times things that happen that I celebrated later. You come out, you put your gear, get your gear off, put it in that bag. You check each other. As a sergeant, I, I was responsible for the team and everything. You know, check, are you good, are you good? Any injuries, let me look at you. You know, quick look at their hands, their arms, their face, no blood. You're watching their limbs, how they move. Watch as they take their vest and their helmet and their gas mask off. Watch as they're taking their gear off and their legs off, their feet coverings off. Is anybody like getting all crick and crooked? Is anybody stiff and moving? You're, you're looking to see if there's any in, broken bones, joint injury, muscle injury. Supervisors, that's your role. Lieutenants, whoever's there, captain, that's your role. Your people is your role. Don't just worry about the inmate injury over here Worry about your team as well. Get them out. Now, how, how do I turn it off after a cell extraction? For instance, say uh, one, one of the head in, 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 uh, in the gang at one of the sets, he was the leader, and they had him all pumped up. He said he was full of, and I talked about this on the, on the cell extraction video, said he was covered in oil. Well, I grabbed the sheet when the door is open. I threw the sheet on the ground so I wouldn't run in. I could see him. I said, no oil, real fast. Just calm because I have experience. I've done over 50 cell extractions as a police officer and correction officer. Experience is the key that I'm going to focus on here. Experience. Throw the sheet down. He picked up the mattress. He was about 6'3", 240. He said, let's go. I'm 5'9", 200 pounds. Power lifter and strong man. Guess who won? I hit him with that shield so hard, that mattress and him hit him off the wall, he was knocked out when he hit that ground. Now that's an explosion of controlled force. I went from zero to 100 in a half second on him. He hit the ground, we got him secure, got his legs secure, got him all wrapped up. Roll him over, sit him up, we don't want him dying on us. Get him in a good position to get good air. He'd been sprayed, but it was an old can of spray and it was kind of weak still provided that first aid to him, that air. Get him up, get him out, fresh air, walk out like a professional. You think, think through this. Listen to what I'm saying. I hope you're watching this whole video front to end. Don't stop in the middle. When you think things through repetitively, what would I do? The more you think it, the better you control your brain and your heart. The better you control your, your resting heart to your excited heart, to your, your panic chaos heart. Practice. Think it through, practice it through. Like weightlifters. And, and folks, I'm going to tell you, in law enforcement, if you're in uniform and a badge, you need to be exercising. Exercise will help you build that consistent muscle memory of used to pushing it to the limits without being overexcited. Hey, I'm going to do one more rep of 10, and you actually get 13. Hey, you get a little bit excited, but your heart just didn't go up to 180 from 90. 
it'll go up a little bit. You've got to build, build yourself, condition yourself. Physical conditioning will help you control that stress and emotion. You need to be working out, running, biking, swimming, anything, active, playing ball with the family, whatever it is you're doing. You know, sit-ups, jumping jacks, everything. Do that. That'll help. If you're doing some martial arts training, some combative training, some uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, that will help you condition your mind. You get used to this. I talk about in videos several times, you know, BJJ, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Be comfortable in an uncomfortable position. You want to learn how to control your emotion and control your body in a fight? Get on the ground, do a little bit of wrestling, have somebody wrap you up in a pretzel where you're in a most awkward position and stay there for about 20, 30 seconds. Control your breathing and realize I'm not dying. He's not killing me. I can breathe. I can move just a little bit. Practice these things. That's what helps you to get through this. I've been through some uh, very serious use of forces. Uh, people have ended up in intensive care. I've been attacked with weapons. A gun pulled in my face. When you get done with this, as somebody with badge on in uniform, you already know, you have to know what's going to bring you that peace and that faith in your life. When you have finished with that incident, gun pulled in my face, I disarm like this, I'll show you that technique in the gun takeaway. I'll repost it this week. Get that gun out of there, snap that arm on that leg, bam, clothesline, go into a shoulder pit and wrap on the ground to the handcuff, like that. When you're done, you stand up. You don't think, like, oh, I could have died. You don't dwell on, I could have died. You dwell on, I was trained. I have techniques, I practiced them. I had practiced them many, many, many times through the military and police when I was faced with a gun right in my face looking down the barrel. I didn't stick around and look down that barrel and guess what caliber it was. I extracted that gun from his hand and I about extracted his head off his body in that clothesline. Practice, think it through, practice, think it through. This is how you learn how to control that emotion to be able to turn it off. And the more you do that, then the less personal you take. That's what I'm getting at. Physical exercise, practicing through physically, through techniques, emotionally going through this. The more you do it, then the less personal it becomes. You don't get mad every time somebody swings at you. I come home my family and say, did you beat anybody up today at prison? Yeah, this guy tried to swing at me, tried to punch me in the head. That happened all the time there. Level 5, max security prison, there was a lot of fighting going on. A lot of fighting I was involved in going on. So it was normal for me to say that. And I could say that to them normally. Now you finish this use of force, um, you've got your supervisors, everything, you got to sit down and write a report. I'll tell you a fast story. When I was in police, brand new, I was on about two years. I had been on the SWAT team about six months. And uh, we did extensive hand-to-hand -hand training on SWAT as you're doing building entry to handle people that you were not using deadly force against. And we, we were taught by a great uh, martial artist instructor. I was very young, about 27 years old. And we thoroughly practiced the lateral vertical neck restraint. And I know some people hate that word. It's a sleeper hole, just like on wrestling. You put your arm right here, you squeeze it right here, put people to sleep. We also extensively, which means many, many, many times, the shoulder pin, one arm up, you're using this arm to brace and squeeze over here. I'm a master at both of them. I'm telling you, I've used them many times. I've not killed anybody with those techniques. I have had no injury and nobody's been to the hospital when I've used the sleeper hold or the shoulder pin. That's my disclaimer. We practice these things. I get a call, physical, domestic, very active. We, we hear fighting and screaming and kids scream, yelling, stop stop choking mommy that's what dispatch tells me guess what i'm in that trailer park and i'm about eight trailers away when this is coming out to me on the radio a dispatch i'm on the scene i'm looking right here so they secure the channel because they they can hear and they know it's active friday night you know nine ten o'clock at night i go knock on the screen door and as i'm walking up i can hear stuff throwing banging all kind of off the glass the wall you know all the sounds inside that mobile home and the woman, there's a boy and a girl in there, a man and a woman. The boy and the girl's about 9 and 11 years old. The woman comes to the door with a little girl. And I can see eight finger marks on her neck 
from him squeezing. I could see this. He was choking the life out of her. She opens the door and says, come in. By now, he's sitting on, on the couch like this, like he's cool. I got a cell phone up here to his ear like this. And I said, are you okay? And she said, yeah. And I said, obviously I can tell some things happened. Let me talk to him. Can you take the kids over here into the kitchen? The kitchen area away from him. That would give me physically 18 to 20 feet away. I come over there. Can I talk to you? No, I'm busy. I can smell the alcohol, so I know there's alcohol involved. You know, I got units coming. I know this. And it turns out my backup was, it was so busy that night. He was working inside a high school basketball game eight miles away. He had to run out, get in his car, drive him down a country road eight miles to get to me. So I know my backup is 10 minutes plus. I'm handling this alone. I ask him another question. He finally stands up. He's still on the phone like this. I said, I need to talk to you. He tries to punch me with the other hand. Why well, he's got a phone. What he's doing is calling a ride. He's trying to get out of there. And he's thinking he's going to fight with me, calling somebody close. Well, I block like this. I reach and grab the hand that's on the phone like this, the wrist, turn it in, twist him backwards, inside wrist lock, back like this, and then I throw him down head first. Now he's head first in a chair. Guess what I did? Boom, put that sleeper on him like this. I got a sleeper going. I'm giving him some what for? Like this, some what for? He goes like this, reach back. Remember we talked about your duty belt, handcuffs, you can reach them from both hands, grab my cuff, get one cuff on. Now I know from training, as soon as you let go, oxygen, blood starts flowing again, he's gonna wake up. I got one cuff on, he started waking up. Well, if it worked once, it's gonna work twice. Did that again. Second time I get it on him, get the second cuff off. Now a man shows up, opens the door and walks in the house. While I'm doing this, the wife wasn't in the kitchen with the kids she's over here standing next to me I'm doing side kicks to keep her away from me while I'm getting cuffs on him I'm thinking man I gotta be calm gotta be calm just me three people here gotta get him cuffed gotta keep her away so as I'm kicking she stays away I get the second cuff on now I got my hands like this on the cuffs and I'm turning them in like that motorcycle grip wow joint manipulation right there of the wrist big time Pain compliance. Now he's drunk, he's not gonna feel a lot. So I'm getting him, I'm thinking, I gotta get out. And I said, I told that guy, I said, I said, you better get out of that door, I'm gonna kill you if you're in my way. I'm walking out this door with him right now. Well, he moved. He was believing in me. So I take my prisoner, walk him out the door, I wanna get out and get him in my car and get to safety. I'm not safe in, in that mobile home. We get out the door, get to the trailer. Well, there's a lot of commotion. You know, I mean, I, I come in, I got my lights on and stuff. I get out to the car, I get surrounded by the car. There's about eight or 10 adults surrounding me. And then they're yelling and cussing at me. They're all buddies. Don't want me to take him to jail. He's kneeling down, I said something, or he was still standing up. I said something to him, he turned, tried to spit at me. So I'm like this, trying to avoid that spit. Kick his knees out, put him down on his knees. He turns around, tries to bite me. So I give him a little forearm check, shove his head, bang his head off the car door, and trap him on the car door, and I can hear the siren coming. I know my backup's coming, but he's not here. And I'm like 130 pounds, not 200 pounds back then. This is a long time ago. And I'm trying to flex, I'm trying to posture, I'm trying to scare and warn them, and I'm telling them, you, you get close to me, I'm gonna shoot you. There's, there's a bunch of you and one of me, I'm start shooting. And I got control of his cuffs, and I got my hand over here by my gun. I didn't draw it out because I didn't want to get into a fight with a gun in my hand where I have to worry about dropping it or anything. So I get over here, finally I'm, I've got control here. I keep them distant, the backup shows up. My backup was six foot eight, about 370 pounds. Played football in, in high school, big guy. When they saw him jump out, he come over to me, he said, you okay, Steve? I said, I'm good. He turned around and he said, y'all go home now. And they went home now, cause he said so. That's what officer presence is. Remember I talked about, you know, bring big friends sometimes is handy. It was handy. He said, give me your keys. So I gave him the key stick. You know, my cruiser was locked, of course. He takes the keys, you know, unlocks the door, everything, picks the dude up by his neck and his belt loop, doop, throws him in the back seat, slams the door and turns around. He said, okay, let me check you out. He was experienced. He wanted to make sure I wasn't injured. He said, are you bleeding or anything? No, he went through, kind of check, move your arms, everything, make sure everything was okay. 
here's the point of this story. Now, I was new. That was my first really, really huge use of force as a police officer, being alone like that. He said, uh, when back, and he was from another another agency, actually, not from my own. He said, when, when your buddy shows up, you know, from your department, he will take this prisoner to jail. You don't, when you have a use of force like this and other police officers around, they transport, not you. You need to ride alone. He said, I want you to go by the gas station and get you a candy bar and, and you know, some chips or Doritos or something like that, a Coke. I want you to, to calm down a little bit. He'll put him in the holding cell, no worries. I did that, I get over there, and I'm just like, <clears throat> I'm still feeling like the Incredible Hawk, still feeling like all that stuff flowing in me, making me green. You know, it took two hours. I ended up signing the ticket in Scribble while the other officer filled out what I said. I was so full of adrenaline, I couldn't even fill it out. Now, this is gonna happen to you. I'm telling you that story, because it's gonna happen. How do you check your emotion? You may need a candy bar, you may need a drink, you may need a walk. If you need to run to the next building and back, have another officer be there close to watch you for your safety. Correction officers, police officers, you know, keep somebody close by you. You don't want to go over here and then all of a sudden your heart race and explode on you. The buddy system, you go through these experiences in life to help repair you. Just like when you're helping your child ride the bike and they fall and they skin their knees and stuff all up, you're going to panic the first time, second time. You hate seeing your kids bleeding and crying. You build resistance and acceptance. I use those words together. You're always gonna be sad to see your child hurt, but you'll have better understanding and be calmer as this happens more frequent, okay? So I'm trying to say all of this to help you to work through this. Lastly, say you've been involved in a serious incident, use of force, you've seen something traumatic and it's time to go back to work. How do you do that? If you feel like you're, you're, you're okay and you go in, let the supervisor know, hey, I feel like I'm okay, but you know, maybe check on me later. Supervisors, check on them later. If you don't feel like you, you want to be at work, you want to do the job, but you really don't feel like you can be alone yet, tell them, hey, I, I need to be in a place, you know, like a two-man thing or put me somewhere where I'm with somebody. You know, let me, let me just get, you know, get my feet wet again, get an hour in there, build my confidence back up, let my nerves and my emotions settle down. Talk to your supervisors about this. They will help you to ease back into it. Because most likely, those supervisors have been through this themselves. They remember this. They got some good stories, sitting around the table stories for later too. When you're ready to go back, you're ready to do this. Now, they're not gonna just say, hey, we'll give you a bunch of time off. Oh, you got in a fight with that guy and he punched you in the head and you got a little cut or you got a couple stitches or something up here at the hospital. You know, they're going to want you to report back to work the next day. Unless you've got a doctor's note, your schedule just continues on. You're supposed to move on, on from it. If it's giving you a little bit of trouble in here, your brain, and in your, your heart and your emotion, let them know. Talk it out. Work through that. That's how you come back to work after being involved in a serious situation. Talk to somebody who's been through that. Officers are always calling me. They call, call non building. Hey, where's Sarge at? I'm, He's over here calling me, yeah, can you come, to, I, 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 we, we went through this, I need to talk. Yeah, I'll be right down. And I go down and talk him through it, talk him through it. Tell him, you know, you did a great job, I'm proud of you. You protected yourself, this is what you have to do. You work in law enforcement, you work in corrections, you have to do stuff like this. You have to protect yourself. I see, I enjoy making this video. You can tell from my body language, I'm gonna point this out because I'm talking about emotion and controlling emotion. I enjoy this. If I sit back like this and try and talk to you, this is how you control your emotion in a use of force situation. I'm not a guy that sits behind a desk that's reading this for his whole career. I'm the guy that's been out there leading you and been in the front and been right next to you. Or I say, it's your turn to do the shield, I'm gonna follow you. You go, I'm right behind you, got your back. I talk, I get excited, I have passion for this. Passion for this. Folks, I do these videos for you to help you get through the career like I did. I had people teaching me. It's my turn to teach back. Hope you like this. I know it's a 25 minute video. Hope you enjoy this. You can survive. You can get through this. You can prepare mentally, emotionally, physically. Start using this mind. Muscles, jumping jacks, push-ups, sit-ups. Start getting this going. It will help you through. 
Again, congratulations on this career and correction officers, happy National Correction Officers Week. See you soon.